Okay, first up what we're going to do is uh, get our video and put it into a format that Final Cut likes. Uh, if the video that you're using in Final Cut doesn't match the frame rate and the resolution of the uh, sequence that you're working in, then you're going to need to constantly render that footage to be able to watch it in Final Cut. What I'm going to do here is I'm using a free program called MPEG Stream Clip. Um, I'm going to go to the File menu and open the DVD. Now, if this feature doesn't work for you, then it is possible to rip the DVD using Handbrake and open the file that you get from that. And what I'm going to do here is just select little bits from the film that I'm going to use in my recut trailer. The reason I'm doing this is that um, I can export it as um, a DV file that Final Cut likes to work with. The only downside of doing this is that the resulting file is quite large, um, so you just need to be aware of that. But it does avoid that issue of having to constantly render the footage in Final Cut. Now the scene that I want to take is um, just here, so what I'm going to do is press the I button to mark in, and I'm going to scrub forward to the end of this little scene here. I'm going to hit O on my keyboard for um, out. So I've set my in and out points and you can see here that um, my in point is at 36 minutes 10 seconds, my out point at 39 um, minutes 5 seconds. Now what I'm going to do is go up to the file menu and export to digital video. By default MPEG Stream Clip is going to pick the format um, and resolution uh, that's appropriate for this. Uh, because I'm in Australia, I'm going to be exporting to PAL. If you're in North America, you'd be uh, using NTSC. The aspect ratio of my film is 4.3. If yours is widescreen, then you'll be using 16.9. If it's in a different aspect ratio to that, uh, you'll get letterboxing, which means you'll have the black strips at the top and uh, bottom of the frame, but that's cool. I am going to click the Make DV button and I'm going to save it onto the desktop of my computer. I might actually create a, a new folder called Night of the Living Dead Clips and I'll call this Clip 1 and I'm going to hit Save. Uh, now what it's doing is going through and processing that video. It's actually a lot quicker to um, take video directly off a DVD rather than um, converting it from an MP4. So this should only take um, a couple of minutes. Now that the first clip has finished exporting, uh, what I would do is repeat this process and find another clip that I'd like to use in my recut trailer, uh, export it to a DV file, and so on, and keep doing that until I have a nice uh, selection of clips to choose from. When you launch Final Cut, you can create a new project by going to File, New Project, uh, and first up, um, just save that. So I'm going to go to Save Project As, and I'm going to save it onto the desktop of my computer and I'm going to call it Night of the Living Dead Recut. Alrighty, um, now I've got a sequence here to start off with. Um, when you look over in the uh, canvas over here, you'll notice that it's a 16-9 aspect ratio. Now, that's a bit of a problem because my movie isn't in 16-9, it's in 4-3. So to start off with, what I'm going to do um, is go to the sequence menu and drop down to settings. And in the sequence setting dialog box you'll notice there's a button that says load sequence preset. And it's here you set the um, the preset for your sequence. Uh, at the moment it's set to 720 so if I had a high definition file that's um, possibly what I'd be using. Um, I actually have a um, 4.3 uh, PAL DV file, so I'm going to be using DV PAL 48 kilohertz. If it was widescreen PAL, I would be choosing anamorphic. Um, so I'm just going to hit DV PAL 48 kilohertz and press OK. Now you'll notice the aspect ratio of my project has changed. First up, a quick introduction to the workspace in Final Cut. In the top left hand corner here, we have what's called the browser. Now this is where you keep all of the assets for your project, including audio files, video files, stills, and sequences. If you click on the buttons along the top of the browser window, that changes the way that you view these objects. I prefer to have it on viewers list because it's the most efficient way to organize your project. 
In Final Cut, you can create things called bins, and these are great ways to organize all of these assets. They're kind of like folders. If you go to File, New, Bin, that'll create a new bin that you can then, for example, put your audio into. And this is really useful if you're managing a really large and complex project. The next really important part of the interface is the viewer. This is where you watch clips um, and prepare to put them in your project. This is also where you can look at the filters that have been applied to particular clips and also adjust the motion settings of that clip. One of the most important elements of the interface is the canvas. The canvas is essentially your finished film. You can view the movie by clicking the play button at the bottom of this window. It can be watched over here. The timeline shows all of the clips in your project. One of the cool things about Final Cut is you can have multiple layers of video and audio. Over here on the right hand side of the screen is the toolbox. This is where you'll find all of the most frequently used tools in Final Cut. One of the difficulties that first time Final Cut users often encounter is accidentally closing windows and palettes. For example, they might close the viewer like this. When this happens, there's a really quick way to return everything to the default view. Go to the Window menu, Arrange, and Standard, and you'll notice that it returns the application to its standard view. So if you're missing your toolbox, or you're missing the browser window, for example, you can get it back by doing that. The shortcut for Window Arrange Standard is Control u This is a really handy shortcut to remember. To add the movie to your project, hold down Command Tab and go to the Finder. You can drag the clip that you've created into the browser window in Final Cut. To do this, you can also go to File, Import, Files, and that will allow you to select the particular clips you'd like to import. Now that we've got a clip here, we can actually get stuck into some editing, and the things I'm going to show you here um, are the very basics um, of editing in Final Cut. I'm going to double click on the clip in the browser window here. What you'll notice is that it opens it up in what's called the viewer. I'm going to go to the percentage up here and change it to fit to window so I can see the image just a little more easily. Okay, um, now basic editing in Final Cut involves finding in and out points. There are a few different ways you can move through footage like this. You can um, scrub the playhead like this, backwards and forwards. Uh, you can also drag this backwards and forwards. Um, it's also possible to play by pressing this button here or pressing the space bar. And you can also um, move forward and backwards by using the arrow key. So you're moving backwards and forwards one frame at a time. So these different techniques can be used to um, find where you want a clip to begin and where you want a clip to end. Now I'm just going to find the in point for this particular clip. Now I'm going to press I on my keyboard to mark in. Uh, you can also mark in uh, by pressing this button down in the timeline. So I'm going to find my out point here. And I'm going to hit O. Now to add this to the project, all you need to do um, is drag it and drop it into the timeline. When you do, you'll notice that there's a red line here. Now what this red line is telling us is that some aspect of the clip needs to be rendered. To render, hold down Command R on your keyboard. Now if I move the playhead back to the beginning of the timeline, uh, in the canvas window, in the top right hand corner of the screen, you'll see this playing. Okay, so that's what we have so far.